What does constraint mean? Well, to put it simply, constraint is the movement limitation imposed by a body over another one. It is also referred to as the degree of freedom reduction in a system. For example, if we have a couple of spheres that have masses greater than zero, both of these spheres, if tied with a rope, will impose a certain restriction on each other's movement. Hence, we are talking about a constraint imposed by one sphere on the other. Having said that, in this video we are going to use the physics library Canon ES, the lock constraint more precisely to create this. But before we start, if you didn't watch this video or you don't know how to use Canon ES, you definitely need to go watch it first because it covers some of the fundamentals that we'll be using in this tutorial. As you can see, we have this basic scene that includes only a couple light sources and also the physics world with the gravity in world step set in the animate function. So what we are going to do now is create a set of constants that we will need to create and position the bodies in their meshes. The first constant is the size of each box. We are also going to need a space variable to set a margin between the boxes. Then we'll create a mass constant set to 1 kilogram. N here represents the number of boxes that we are going to create. Shape is an instance of the box class which we are going to set as the shape of our bodies. And then of course the box geometry in the material to be applied. Next we'll create a couple of rays for the meshes and bodies to link each body with a mesh. I have already explained this method in this video, so if you find this confusing, make sure to go watch the fusion part of the tutorial. And now time to create our boxes and position them in the scene. To do that we can create each box individually or we can use a for loop and just use a little bit of math for the positioning part which is exactly what we are going to do here. So we'll create the for loop then create an instance of the body class and set the mass in the shape. Now for the positioning part we are going to use AND in the counter to set the X coordinate and a couple of constants to set the Y and Z. Nothing complicated here, so feel free to tweak these values as you want. And then we'll just add the body to the world in the body's array and create its mesh add it to the scene in the meshes array. And there we go, we got our boxes. Now let's add a couple of boxes to serve as stands. To do that we'll use almost the same code except that first they need to be outside the for loop, second they need to have a zero mass or set their type as static to prevent them from getting affected by the gravity, third we need to tweak the values of their positions. And now that we are done with the first stand, which is the right one, by the way, not the left, let's see what we've got. Looking good, now let's add the left one. Furthermore, we can add a bit of spacing between the boxes, and that's by tweaking the math used to set the x value of each box like so. Add 
Actually, let's do the same with the stands so they match the two ends. Now, how do we turn that set of boxes into a system which movement is dependent on each one of its components? The answer is simple, which is using the log constraint to attach the boxes to each others. It's a class that takes three arguments, the first and the second ones are the two bodies to link, which is our main focus, and the third argument is an optional object to set the max force of the log constraint. That being said, let's get back into the code editor and create an instance of the log constraint class, then pass box body as the first argument, which is the current body in the for loop iteration. The second one is a variable, let's call it previous, which includes the reference to the previous body. And then we need to add the constraint to the world. Now you might be wondering where did we get the previous variable from? Well, it's not created yet, so let's do that. Then we are going to assign the current body to it at the end of the loop. Now if we take a look, you see that the code doesn't work, and that's caused by the previous variable being not initialized at the first iteration. So what we are going to do is merely set an if condition to prevent the creation of the log constraint when the previous variable is still undefined, aka the first iteration, and that's it. And with that done, we come to the end of this tutorial, so make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.